Voters in Chad are casting their ballots in a long-delayed presidential election that's set to end three years of military rule. While there are uh, 10 candidates on the ballot, chances are the current military leader, Mahamat Debi, will come out on top. The opposition says the election is just a formality to keep power in the hands of the Debi dynasty. He's already Chad's interim president, and now he wants to make it official. His dad ruled Chad for three decades, and Mohammad Debi wants to consolidate the family dynasty. It's not easy to lead a transition in Chad. But for three years, I ensured the continuity of the state. I preserve the unity of our country. I preserve peace. I believe I have honored my commitments. Debbie has long said he was committed to not run for president. When the four-star general took the helm following the death of his father in 2021, he promised to hand back power to a civilian government within 18 months. But he didn't. Violent protests broke out in 2022 when Debbie extended his interim presidency. Official reports claim 50 people were killed in the ensuing government crackdown. But rights groups say the number is higher and included summary executions of protesters. Debbie denied any government involvement. In December last year, Chad held a referendum on a new constitution, which the junta said would be a key step towards a return to civilian rule and democracy. The opposition said it paved the way for Debbie to cement his grip on power. The list of presidential contenders has shrunk rapidly as opposition candidates have been banned from running. Debbie's main rival, Yahya Dillo, was shot dead in an army assault on party headquarters in February. Human Rights Watch says he was killed point blank with a single bullet to the head. The only other remaining candidate is Saksé Masra, the current Prime Minister of Chad. Masra was a former opponent of Debbie and the organiser of the 2022 protests. But in a surprise twist, Debbie appointed him Prime Minister in January after giving him amnesty and allowing him to return from exile. It's all a front for plurality, opponents of Debbie say, leaving little real choice for Chadians and guaranteeing the heir to the throne remains in power. We can now talk to Oluwale Ojewale. He's an expert on the Sahel region and an analyst with the Institute for Security Studies in Dakar in Senegal. Thanks for being with us. Now, past elections in Chad have not generally been free and fair. Will this time be any different? Thank you so much for having me. I don't think it's going to be different in terms of what the election outcome is going to look like, because it appears the president is just contesting against himself. The leading opposition was um, summarily removed in a very controversial uh, situation recently. And I think that has actually cast the doubt on um, the quality of the electoral outcome that we'll see in the coming days in Chad. Still, it is an election. We can see people standing in line to vote. What's at stake in this election for the people of Chad? Well, I think uh, looking at the way the transition referendum took place, a majority of uh, Chadian citizens actually want a change in terms of the political direction, in terms of um, what the term limit should look like, and even a system of government that they want to practice, moving from the unitary system to a more federal system. Um, but the moment the transition went the way it went in terms of what the outcome looks like, I think uh, the coming election is just about ticking the box, not really addressing the concern of the people, because uh, uh, the supreme leader is running against himself. The country, Chad, is quite divided. Are the election results likely to be accepted by all parties contesting this election? It depends on the way they align as far as this election is concerned. If the opposition are also surrogate for the for Derby, 
there you might not really see so much in terms of the pushback on their part when the election result is announced. Uh, I think the more important thing is what is going to be the full ramification of these in Chad, considering the security situation across that bed from Mali up to Sudan, and then how much of Chad is going to really translate into a, a playbook that other junta in the region are going to be deploying as they also move towards democratic transition in the days to come. But in terms of internal policies of Chad, uh, I, we can't really speak with certainty what is going to happen after this election, depending on how much of opposition is silent in the process. You're talking about the, the Sahel region there, the Western Sahel. We've seen several coups there in uh, various countries in recent years, often linked to anti-French sentiment and growing resentment towards other former colonial powers. How could this election impact the fight for influence in the region? Um, this election is very, very strategic in the sense that it is happening at the time that um, we are witnessing the displacement of Western alliance in the region, and that is being supplanted by, by, by Russia interest in the region. So I think uh, broadly, if things continue to go in this direction in a situation in which people are removing their khaki to contest and put themselves on the ballot, um, it, two things are bound to happen. One is that we are seeing the resurgence of the Cold War era alignment and realignment in the region in which Western establishment have been displaced and been supplanted by, by the Russian influence. The second thing is that uh, maybe it is not yet Uhuru, as they say, in, in East Africa, because um, if the condition in which they emerge create a lot of division in the country, then it can set um, it can set a template for a spiral effect in the coming days in terms of political instability, particularly okay. around that cool bed. Oluwale, thank you very much for talking with us. That was Oluwale Ojiwale with the Institute for Security Studies. Thank you so much for having me.